welcome back to this course on polymer chemistry. In this lecture 13, we plan to cover the effect of temperature on rate of polymerization and molecular weight and also we will start a discussion on thermodynamics of chain growth polymerization. Before I start this subject, just recap uh, the subject matter what we discussed in the last two lecture. We discussed the various types of chain transfer reactions possible in radical polymerization and their defect, effect on molecular weight. In principle, that more chains, if more chain transfer happen, molecular weight actually gets reduced compared to if there was no chain transfer reaction. We talked about gel effect, and we also talked about the effect of glass transition temperature on the resulting polymer, effect of glass transition temperature of the resulting polymer on um, polymerization process. Now, let us start, what is the effect of temperature on the polymer polymerization rate and the resulting molecular weight. Now, first let us consider consider the case of thermal initiation. Okay, we know that in case of thermal polymerization R p is given by k p m f k d i Half. We also know that x and bar the number average degrees of polymerization is given by expression. We have deduced this expression in earlier lectures, so you should be knowing this very well, where B is the average number of initiator residues per polymer molecules. Now, from these reactions, if you look at uh, the equation little carefully, you can find out that if the monomer concentration increases, both R p and the number average degrees of polymerization increases, which is the molecular weight. If the initiator concentration increases, then R p goes up rate of polymerization goes up, but x in bar or the molecular weight comes down. So, what is the effect of temperature on R p and x n is we are going to discuss now. Now, the same expression R p I can divide into two terms, one is temperature dependent and another is temperature independent. So, if you look at the temperature independent term and put in the left hand side, I can put concentration m f to the power half and i to the power half. Now, this part is temperature independent, whereas the other term the rate constant k p k d to the power half and k t to the power half, these are all rate constant value. So, definitely they will depend on the temperature of the reaction you are using. Similarly, you can break down this number of degrees of polymerization, number average degrees of polymerization into two terms. One is temperature independent, I can break into two term, this is temperature independent and the other term k d k t to the power half. So, these are temperature dependent. Now, you also know from our basic physical chemistry knowledge that rate constant can be expressed in form of Arrhenius type equation. Expression where you can write a rate constant is a e to the power minus e by 
R t, where k is the rate constant, A is the frequency factor, frequency collision factor, E is the activation energy for that reaction. This is well known to you guys, so you know that. So, we can express all the three rate constant k p, k t and k d in terms of Arrhenius equation p to the power minus E p, where E p is the activation energy for propagation. Similarly, k d is a p e to the power minus e d and k t is a t e to the power minus e t, e t is the activation energy for termination reaction. Now, in this, in this expression, this is the expression for rate of propagation and now we know that the monomer is consumed both in initiation process and in the propagation process, but because the monomer consumed in the initiation process is very insignificant compared to propagation process. So, rate of polymerization is equivalent to rate of propagation. So, we are writing R p as rate of reaction which is same as rate of propagation, whereas k p is the rate constant for propagation and E p is the activation energy for propagation. So, I can take this expression and write this k terms in terms of the Arrhenius equation or I can simply write ln R p from that earlier expression m f to the power half i to the power half plus ln a p a d to the power this is a d to the power half a t to the power half minus e p half e d minus half e t by r t. Okay, we can write all this from this Arrhenius type expression and this is this term E p plus half E d minus half E t we are writing as the entropy of the polymerization reaction. Okay. So, entropy of the polymerization is combination of propagation initiation as well as termination. So, depending upon the sign of this activation energy, the rate will depend on the temperature. We can just simply write d l n r p by d t is plus E r by r t square, if you difference with the temple to, to find out the rate with respect to the temperature. Now, what is the value of E r? Now, we can before we talk about the value of U r, we can similarly write from the expression of x n. If you look at these numbers here k p k d to the half k t to the power half here k d is in the down. So, d l n x n which gives you the rate of change of molecule degrees of average degrees of number average degrees of polymerization as similarly E x n by R t square, where E x n is E p minus half E d minus half E t. It is coming from the expression we used in the last page. Now, what is the value of E r? and E x n. Now, this will come from the individual values of E p, E d and E t. Now, as we know the rate constant or rate of the reaction is much faster for termination is the highest rate and then propagation and then initiation. We can 
simply write from our that knowledge that E t is should be greater than the activation energy of this must be greater than E p because this is the most this is the fastest reaction and this is also fast reaction where the initiation is a slower reaction. So, uh, you expect that activation energy of the initiation reaction should be higher than the other two. Now, what are the typical values of this E d and E t? Typical values of E d for thermal initiation process comes uh, about 120 to 150 kilo joule per mole as E p comes on 20 to 40 kilo joule per mole and E t is 2 to 20 kilo joule per mole. This is the experimental value. Now, that gives you the value for E r around 80 to 90 kilo joule per mole inverse. That means, that the rate will increase, rate of polymerization will be in, will increase with increasing temperature. If you plot the rate of polymerization with 1 by t, it will be coming down linearly. Now, this value indicates that for every 10 degree rise, every 10 degree rise is there is around 2 to 3 fold in 2 to 3 times increase in the rate of polymerization. So, if T goes up, R p goes up and every decade, every 10 degree centigrade it will be around 2 to 3 times from the original value. Now, if you calculate the number for E x n, you get around 60 minus 60 kilo joule per mole inverse, mole inverse okay, per mole, which means that degrees of average degrees of polymerization or the molecular weight will, will come down as we increase the temperature. So, if you plot with 1 over t, this is the curve for R p and this is the curve for your x n, x n bar. So, this is clear to you that from the experimental values of these activation energies, you can justify that if the temperature goes up, the rate of the polymerization will go up and similar time the molecular weight or the number average degrees of polymerization will come down. Now, you can justify these in visualizing this way that once you increase the temperature, the more and more radical gets generated for a given time. Now, if more and more radical gets generated, then more and more polymer forms okay, for a given time and more polymer forms rate of polymer increases and because the radical concentration increases increased with uh, temperature, the termination reaction also increased. So, as the more termination is reaction is going on, the average length of the polymer chains also come down. So, you can justify uh, this uh, uh, drop in molecular weight with increase in temperature and increasing rate of polymerization with increase in temperature by just thinking that with increase you get more number of radical generated in the polymerization medium for a given time. Now, if we talked about the other initiation processes, this was for thermal initiation processes. Now, if we talk about the other initiation process like redox, number 2 is redox initiation. Remember the rate expression for redox reaction, it was k p m k d concentration of reductant concentration of oxidant twice k t 
to the power half and x n bar would give you k p to the power m k p m twice b twice k t k d red rocks to the power half. Now, again you can break down this expression into two terms one temperature independent and another temperature dependent. Temperature dependent terms are the rate constant k p k d and k t and same as you can do this and do the same exercise what we did for the thermal initiation and see what is the value of E r in this case. E r in this case means for redox initiation again would be coming around 40 kilo joule per mole that is because the E d for this reaction for this initiation process, process is much lower compared to a thermal initiation process that is we while discussing in the initiation the types of initiation process we mentioned that redox reaction you can do it at lower temperature that is because the activation energy for the initiation reaction is much lower compared to a thermal initiator. Now, that gives if you use the same thing you will find that E r is coming around whereas, the, the values for k p and k t remain same ok I, or means the values for E t and E p remain same as the thermal initiation because these are the same reactions we are talking about. So, if you put all these numbers you will get that E, e r coming around 40 kilo joule per mole. So, in this case also the R p goes up as temperature goes up, but it is not at as as much increase as in the case of thermal initiation process. Now, what is E x n 0? If you again put this number you will find that E x n 0 is about 0 kilo joule per mole, which suggests that there is no effect, no effect of temperature on molecular weight for a redox initiated radical polymerization, redox initiated radical polymerization. Okay. So, what for this type of initiation we know we found that tem if temperature increases rate of polymerization also increases, but the increase is not as much as in case of thermal polymerization and because the activation energy for the molecular build up is about 0, which means there is no effect of the temperature on the molecular of redox polymerization. That is why the redox polymerization are done at room temperature or even sub room temperature because temperature increase would not affect uh, you know, have no effect on the, uh, the radical polymerization and the uh, now let us talk about the third uh, type of initiation which is that uh, photo initiation or photochemical reactions photo initiation. Now, we know again from our lectures before it gives you phi i a k t to the power half this is i a i a is the intensity of light phi is the quantum yield. You do not see k d term because K d for a thermal initiation process is actually E d is 0 I sorry this photochemical reaction process E d is 0 and the other 
E p and E t remain same. So, if you put E d is 0 and E p E t term or the values from same as earlier, you will get E r is around 20 kilojoule per mole. So, as E x n. Okay, which means that in case of a radical polymerization initiated by a photochemical reaction, again the reaction rate, rate of polymerization increases mildly in this case with increasing temperature and so does the molecular weight. Here also molecular weight increases slightly with increase in the temperature. However, you should remember that the in case of temperature effect of photochemical reaction, this is little more complicated because the initiators which produces radical photochemically, they also produces radical at a higher temperature. So, if you increase there will be complications of the which type of initiation is dominating and so the this equation will be combination of a photochemical reaction and a thermal initiation. So, this will be little complicated, but for simply we can um, if we do it a lower temperature then that thermal dissociation does not come um, does not uh, take effect then this conclusion will be varied uh, will be varied that rate of reaction or rate of polymerization my slightly increases with increasing temperature and the degrees of polymerization or the molecular weight also increases with increases in the temperature slightly. Now, remember we, ex we got this expression for rate of polymerization this and uh, in case of thermal initiation as well this this expression this expression we got assuming that the reaction is at steady state okay we we applied the steady state approximation to find out the concentration of the radical total radical present so these conclusions we just made they about the effect of temperature on the reaction rate and molecular weight is valid till the steady state is maintained. Once the steady state is broken, for example, this gel effect during the gel effect when that steady state is broken, then this is not valid, this conclusions is not are not valid anymore and you know the, the effect of temperature will be many uh, much more complicated than what we just discussed. So, we, we also did not consider that there could be possibility of transfer reaction in this case. We just talked about the propagation and initiation propagation and the termination reactions. Now, there could be transfer reaction chain transfer reactions as well. Now, from Mayo equation we have seen how the molecular weight varies with the chain transfer of the polymers where we can write Okay, this is we have in the last class or uh, the lecture before last one we had seen that if there is a chain transfer then the molecule actually drops as a result of chain transfer reaction and this is this 0 is this x n bar is the number average degrees of polymerization in absence of any chain transfer reaction. So, if there is any chain transfer reaction 
the actual value of x in bar will come down and c s and other c's it could be s could be a monomer or solvent or a molecules which are added from outside by deliberately or by it present as impurities and this is this is this c r stand for transfer constant and are given by the rate constant for the transfer and rate constant for the propagation. So, we can again write same ln equation and write ln C s at similar to the earlier cases ok. Now, generally E the activation energy for transfer is higher than the activation energy for the propagation, which means with with increase in temperature C s goes up the value of C s goes up ok. From this expression you can see you can write the other similar to other expressions and well which gives you E transfer S minus E p by R t square ok. From this expression you can clearly see that with increase in temperature, if temperature goes up this values of transfer coefficient transfer constant goes up and if this transfer constant goes up that means, what will happen molecular weight molecular weight will further come down. Okay, so, we have we have seen how you can get quantitatively the average number average degrees of polymerization in presence of chain transfer reaction and from this expression we have seen that if we increase the concentration of chain transfer agents the molecular weight goes down and if the chain transfer or transfer constant goes up then also the molecular weight comes down compared to the case where there is no transfer. Now, C s value as we seen from the activation energy for transfer reaction and the propagation reaction that if temperature goes up C s goes up which means x n come downs ok. So, increasing temperature has two effect increasing temperature by itself even if there was no transfer reaction it was decreasing the molecular weight and in presence of transfer reaction is further reducing. So, in if you have a transfer reaction going on then the temper increasing temperature will affect more it will decrease the molecular weight more if in comparison where there is no transfer reaction going on both the cases the molecular weight drop with with increasing temperature, but if there, there are transfer reaction going on then the drop will be much more compared to situation where is when there is no transfer reaction. Now, that basically says uh, uh, what uh, uh, the effect of temperature on uh, uh, rate of polymerization and and molecular weight for uh, different uh, radical processes different means different uh, radical processes initiated by different initiation reaction as and also in case of the radical reaction where you have chain transfer reactions. Now, let us talk about uh, thermodynamics of of radical polymerization. In fact, this is true for any chain growth polymerization. So, we can generalize this 
chain growth polymerization. Now, we have just concluded that if T goes up, RP goes up. We just concluded in our discussion few minutes back. Now, does it mean that if you increase keep on increasing the temperature rate always will go up? The answer is no, because in this case we have only considered the forward reaction. Okay, we are talking about propagation reaction. Whereas there could be backward reaction, depropagation reaction as well. This is Kp and this is K D P depropagation reaction. Okay. Now we do not consider normally the reverse reaction because the temperature we do for most of the monomers the reverse reaction is almost nil. That is why we always talk about the rate of forward reactions. So, actually the rate of so net rate of polymerization would be the rate of polymerase propagation minus rate of depropagation. Now, as I said that in normal case whatever temperature we use for most of the polymers this is 0. So, we, we consider rate of polymerization as the rate of propagation altogether. But if we increase the temperature at some temperature the rate of depolymerization will also be significant. In those cases we have to consider the rate of depolymerization also and if you increase the temperature further rate of depolymerization also increases so as rate of polymerization as we discussed just now. So, at some temperature some temperature T which we call T C ceiling temperature. ceiling temperature this R p becomes R d p. So, basically this propagation and deprogression reaction they reach an equilibrium. So, rate of polymerization reaction propagation reaction is same as rate of depropagation reaction. If I want to show this in, um, in a figure what we can so if this is your rate and if this temperature rate of polymerization or rate of propagation increases with temperature now at some point of time some point temperature rate of depropagation also this is d p and this is p this is propagation and this is depropagation also increases. Now, that point so net so net reaction net polymerization reaction which is r p net how will that look like it will be something like this okay? because below this temperature the rate of polymerization is higher and then the depolymerization becomes significant and at this temperature which is T is T c the net polymerization is 0. That means, if you do not see any change in the concentration of monomer which means that no polymerization is taking place. So, if you come back after some time and um, uh, take the measure the concentration of the monomer and you see that the con monomer concentration is same as before which means that monomer is not monomer is not participating in further polymerization reaction. So, that is the time when the equilibration is reached. Now, let us probe this uh, phenomenon a little uh, more. At T c you have R 
R p is same as R d p. Now, R p you know k p m and m dot and this will be m dot. Okay. So, what is the equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant k is k p by k d p is 1 by m at equilibrium. Now, at equilibrium I write E because this is in equilibrium. So, I write subscript E for this all this concentration. So, at equilibrium constant is related to the concentration of the monomer in this case only. Now, this is a special case where you do not see the concentration of product is appearing in your equilibrium constant. This is only the reactants in this case the monomer which is appearing in the your equilibrium constant value. Now, I can from the right few thermodynamic expression we know del G 0 standard gives free energy change for polymerization R T C A L n k where k is the equilibrium constant we can write from this R T C L n m e and we can write del G 0 p as del H 0 p minus T C del H 0 p this side right side R T C L n m e this as you know this this is the standard enthalpy of polymerization reaction and this is standard entropy of the polymer reaction and this is standard state for monomer is considered standard state for monomers are either pure monomer pure monomer or a one molar solution of monomer whereas for polymer is pure amorphous polymer pure amorphous polymer or slightly crystalline polymer or or one molar solution of polymer repeat units. Okay, so, what does it del H and del S 0 means that you take a pure monomer and convert to pure polymer the associated enthalpy chain change will give you delta is 0 or you take one molar solution of the monomer and convert completely into polymer. Now, the associated uh, enthalpy change will be give you delta H 0 and the entropy change will give you the del S 0 of the polymer. Now, we look at this expression and we can this expression and let us write from this expression thus L n m e is del H 0 p by R T c minus del H 0 p by R. Similarly, we can write T c is del H 0 p by 0 p plus R 
then now what does these two expressions say is that T C and M E are related, okay. they are not independent to each other. If you change T C, if you increase T C, the equilibrium constant concentration of the free monomer increases and so as the other thing M E increases, the equilibrium constant concentration of the monomer increases, then T C also increases. This is a very important thing that T C is not a single temperature, okay. it, de it depends on the composition of your polymerization reaction. Okay. It is not that every polymer has a or every monomer has a single uh, ceiling temperature and this is often misunderstood that T C is a sing single number. It actually depends on the monomer concentration as well. Now, how to how to uh, sort of understand read these equations little uh, from understanding every temper if you can you can consider every temperature you can consider every temperature as if you react you can consider whatever reaction you are doing as a ceiling temperature. Now there is always a associated equilibrium value of the monomer. If you start a reaction, if you start or if at any point of time in a reaction, if M concentration is or the monomer is higher than mon equilibrium value, then the reaction will proceed till M becomes M, then reaction will not take place further. That means, the rate of propagation will be same as depropagation. So, every temperature there is a associated for every temperature there is a ceiling temperature there is associated equilibrium monomer concentration. So, if you start or any time during your reaction if your free monomer concentration is higher than the equilibrium monomer concentration corresponding to that temperature, your reaction temperature, then what will happen? The reaction will continue, the propagation will continue till your free monomer com concentration become as the equilibrium free monomer concentration. At any point, I say you, you start a reaction with your free monomer concentration less than Me, then we'll, what will happen? You fix a temperature for your reaction and you start with a monomer concentration which is lower than the your equilibrium monomer concentration which means the reaction will not go rather if the polymer chain can be initiated polymer chains can be broken some some place and you get a radical or some active center the polymers will depropagate unzip to form monomers so that the free monomer concentration goes up and gives you the equilibrium monomer concentration. And if you are at any point of time, if your monomer concentration is equivalent to your the equilibrium monomer concentration, then the reaction will stop. Uh, that means, that there will be no appreciable or there is no change in the concentration of the free monomer. So, apparently there is no reaction going on, we actually there is a rate of propagation is same as rate of depropagation. So, again one more time let me emphasize that if you every temperature, every your reaction you can choose any temperature of your reaction and consider that as a ceiling temperature. Now, that temperature corresponds to a equilibrium value of the free monomer determined by the values of del H 0 and del S 0. Okay. Depending upon this value, you get the relation between T C and M E. So, for every temperature there is a M E value and if your 
at any point of time your reaction concentration the free constant free constant uh, monomer of the concentration of your free monomer is higher than the equilibrium monomer concentration reaction will proceed till the reaction the mono free monomer concentration is same as the equilibrium monomer concentration. Let us take an example. Now, for temperature 298 K or 25 degree centigrade, what is the Me for different monomers? Now, Me you can get again T is given, T C is given. So, that is your temperature of reaction. You can get it from the values of del 0 p and del s p. If you know this, this R you know and your reaction temperature you know, then you will get this value of the free monomer concentration at equilibrium. So, that is let us vinyl acetate 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 moles per liter, methyl acrylate moles per liter, methyl methacrylate, styrene, moles per liter and alpha methyl styrene 2.2 moles per liter. So, if you can carry out a polymerization reaction of this monomers at 25 degree centigrade, the reaction will stop or in accurate sense reaction will reach equilibrium till your monomer concentrations comes down to this level. Okay. So, if you start with the pure methyl methacrylate and do the reaction as 298 degree centigrade, 298 K or 25 degree centigrade, then reaction will proceed polymer polymerization proceed till the free concentration or the concentration of the free monomer becomes 10 to the power minus 3 moles per liter, which also means that you can never complete a reaction. You can never complete 100 percent entire methyl methacrylate to the polymer stage, because the before that there will be stage where equilibrium where for any temperature where the propagation step and depolymerization step are same. Now, look at the values of alpha methyl styrene, that is 2.2 moles per liter. Now, the pure the concentration of pure alpha methyl styrene comes about 7.7 moles per liter. So, this monomer will polymerize at 25 degree centigrade if you can, of course, 25 degrees you cannot polymerize because you have to generate uh, that is very difficult, you have to increase the temperature for the reasons you know. If you can start a polymer or you can polymerize alpha methyl styrene at 25 degree centigrade, then the polymerization will take place till the concentration becomes 2.2 moles per liter. Once it reaches this value, it will not proceed. Now, it will be interesting to see what is the values for T c when you start with a pure monomer. That is interesting because if you start with a pure monomer and if your T c is your reaction temperature, then the equilibrium value of your free monomer is same as the pure monomer. That means, reaction will not at all proceed. Now, let us put this number for the same, same monomers, the T c values. Let me cut this and put this. This is value for equilibrium concentration of the free monomer at which is pure monomer. 
So, what will be the T c? For styrene it is 310 degree centigrade, for alpha methane styrene it is 61 degree centigrade, for, for styrene is uh, MMA is 220 degree centigrade. What does it mean? If you start a reaction of alpha methane styrene from pure monomer at 61 degree centigrade, what will happen? This is already reached, pure monomer is the equilibrium concentration. So, it has, that means it has already reached the equilibrium, that means it will never polymerize further. If you do it a lower temperature, then ME value will come down and reaction will proceed till that equilibrium value of the monomer concentration. If you do above 61 degree, the ME value is even higher than the pure monomer, which means again there is no polymerization possible. Okay. I hope you caught this uh, concept of the ceiling temperature and how does it influence your polymerization process. So, again every temperature you can consider as ceiling temperature. Normally, you do reaction at a little higher temperature for say 80 degree or 100 degree. Now, if you do at 80 degree, then you can only reach a polymerization, you can carry out the polymerization till the free monomer concentration reaches the equilibrium value of that temperature. Now, because these numbers are low 10 to the power minus 9, 10 to the power minus 6, 10 to the power minus 3 which is considered say 25 degree centigrade. Now, if we increase say around this 25 degree centigrade say 50 degree or say 100 degree, it will come down little bit, it, it go up little bit even though the numbers will be very low, which means if you do it at 100 degree centigrade, you almost quantitatively convert the monomers, but there will be always some free monomer remaining which is equal to the free monomer concentration at equilibrium for that particular temperature. Now, how do you get the values of T c? Now, we know that again from that expression we just talked about plus R L n m e. How do you get the relations between T c and M e? If we know the reaction, the values of delta is p and delta is p. Now, what is delta is p sign? Delta H is negative because it is exothermic reaction, pi bond is converting to a sigma bond and del S is also less than 0 because the monomers is getting tied up into a more order state compared to a disorder state. So, if we we can plot a m versus e versus 1 over T c and from the slope we can if you know this by experimental process we can get these values from the slope and intercept is okay so if we know these values we can get the value for del s and del h and reverse is true if we know the value of del s and del h we can find out the relation between the M E and T C. Now, each point, each point in this represents a particular T C and corresponding M E value, okay, which means that T C is not a singular number, it varies along with your free monomer concentration. Now, how does these numbers del H and del S 
vary with different monomer. Now, del H is del H you know is basically the difference in the activation energy for the propagation reaction and the depropagation reaction. So, if I plot say energy and this is your monomer and this is your polymer. So, this difference is your del H. So, anything anything which stabilizes this energy the monomer energy will decrease the difference and anything which actually increases the energy of the polymer the produced or resulting polymer it also will reduce your magnitude of del H. Now, so anything if monomer is stabilized then del H magnitude of del H will come down. Now, this stabilization could be due to resonance in the active effect or hyperconjugation or even by inter monomer association okay, or inter polymer association. And if the polymer is strained then also this goes up del H comes down. So, that will depend on the structure of the monomers and we will talk about that more in next lecture. Now, what about del S? Del S is basically a difference between your translational, rotational and vibrational entropy of monomer and polymer. Now, whatever vibrational and rotational entropy is lost by the monomers is actually gained by the polymer. So, it is basically the entropy the delays value is basically the entropy of changing entropy of the translational entropy of the monomers resulting in a polymer. Now, this translational entropy does not depend too much on the monomer structure. So, we will find that the delays values are more or less independent for every monomer in this chain polymerization. So, we will start next lecture from this, uh, this page and talk about more on the values of del H and del S and how a monomer structure actually uh, determine or influence the value of del H and um, which in turn determine the thermodynamic feasibility of polymerization of a monomer. So, we will start from this page in the next lecture.